thank you so much. Uh, hello, hello everybody. Uh, this is the last lecture in this year from the cycle devoted to the Russian native breeds recognized by the FCI. But I will, I believe, to be continued in the next year regarding other Russian breeds which are not yet recognized by the FCI. So, uh, today, the topic of the day, as you can see at your screens, is beautiful dog, Samoyed. Samoyed. We are surrounded now by snow, by white Russia. And the breed of today is also in white. So, let us go on. And as usually in the beginning, I would like you to remind you if you heard it before. And uh, for newcomers, uh, it, it will be something new. I would like to start with the approaches I will use for the better understanding of the standard provisions. So I will use the model approach, which includes two models, biomechanical model of the dogs and harmonic model of the dogs. There are two different uh, pers perspectives. First is devoted to the soundness as well as the second to their harmony. These models are resulted by long years researches I have done during 24 years from 1963 to 1987. And they are based on the specifics of the Soviet breeding strategy. According to that strategy, the only breeding commission of each breed club was in charge of breeding plan a year. And since 1963, during almost 30 years, I had been the chairman of that commission, first in the Doberman Club and later on in the Schnauzer Club. In some periods, that plan included per year about 300 to 400 broad ditches. The statistics was huge. And the hypothesis appeared during breeding process were checked for the trustfulness. A biomechanical model is the integrity of several postulates, as well as the harmonic model is the integrity of several harmonious proportions, which are important for the judge's eyes uh, to be in tune with the harmony. Later on, I have defended the doctoral dissertation in biology named Dog Confirmation Improvement Through Biomechanical Model of the Dogs. So, the previous hypothesis became afterwards status of the scientifically proven facts. Therefore, you can fully trust them and use in your practice. Both biomechanical model and harmonic model are of practical value. Judges can find here universal reference points which help them to increase the objectivity of their assessment. And the breeders can find here the selective algorithm for the acceleration of the breeding progress. And this is the preface. Now, uh, let me tell you about the biomechanical model. First of all, in front of you, you see the dogs. Uh, from the picture uh, here, left picture, you can see beautiful specimen of the breed, how we look, how we can see in the ring, in the reality, and in the everyday life. On the right picture, 
you can see what is inside. And our purpose is to analyze how it is built from inside. How it is built from inside. To understand it, we go, uh, we follow to the biomechanical model. In front of you, you can see uh, a lot of lines and uh, some angles. Step by step, uh, I will tell you about each postulate. And the postulate number one is postulate regarding the proportions of the top line from the beginning to the tail cell, from the first thoracic vertebra uh, spinous processes to the tails. These proportions are determined by three numbers. Two, one, one. Where two units fall on the thoracic part of the spine or actual back. One unit falls on the lumbar part or loin. And last one unit falls on the sacrum or rump. Sacrum is the upper part of the group. The next postulate is uh, a postulate uh, regarding uh, which the um, angle by the axis of the pendulum is the 90 degrees. What is the pendulum? It is the conditional name of angle created by two lines, two oblique lines, blue ones. The first oblique line is along the median line of the shoulder blade, this one. And the second one connects the hip joint and the iliac tuber. And the point of intersection, you can see, the angle created by two those blue lines is right, or 90 degrees. So, this is the second postulate. Now it's the time for the third postulate. Okay. The postulate number three is the postulate of two horizontal lines, principle of two horizontal lines, which are connecting a shoulder joint or humerus scapula and hip joint. And the second one connects the elbow joint and knee joint. They are parallel. The next postulate is the principle of two verticals. Uh, you can see here two vertical lines, one, two. The first one is the line according to which the elbow joint is exactly under the top of width. And the second one connects knee joint and root of the tail. As the application to this postulate, there is one more picture. And uh, this is the conclusion of a previous postulate and the explanation to be done later on, when I will give the uh, comments quite briefly, uh, but a bit later. This postulate is about the location of the center of gravity. You can see the center of gravity is located on the vertical line, uh, vertical line lowered from the point of intersection. Here is it. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, we are discussing one illustration which probably wasn't put here. Um, so, I will use the uh, general picture and uh, please listen to me carefully. It is not indicated here what I will be saying, so please be, be careful. 
according to the last postulate, the length of the body and the distance between front and the rear legs are equal. I have to notice that the length of the body is measured from the point of sternum, not from the point of the joint. Because in front of the joint there is a part of body. And otherwise this part will be lost. At the same time, it belongs to the body. So the length of the body to be measured from the point of sternum to the end of um, sciatic bone of buttock and uh, the uh, limbs should be placed according to the correct zootechnical stance. What does it mean? The elbows should be uh, located under the body as well as the rear limbs should be placed behind to the vertical rear past. So, one more time. The length of the body and the distance between front and rear legs are equal. This is the last postulate. And now I will um, come back and give you short comments to each of the uh, postulates. So, I will do this picture. Which picture? For the, yeah, for the, for the beginning, please. For the beginning, please do not pay any attention to these numbers. We will do it a bit later on. The only. Okay. Uh, for, the, for the beginning, you can see that the back actual back or thoracic part of the spine is the longest part of the spine of the spinal column <coughs> namely it is half of the top line half of the spinal column the loin is the short part, one quarter of the top line. And the sacrum is also one quarter of the top line if we will uh, take in uh, considerations, in consideration these numbers. So biggest part, shortest part, and shortest part uh, of the spine. Uh, long actual back, means that the uh, length of the chest or length of the rib cage uh, uh, no better better to say it's uh, on different way uh, because of the long actual back the rib cage is long it was proven now I can only dict declare it for you and the explanation you could find in my book Doc Confirmation and its Evaluation which is available in UK in our dogs. Uh, so, because ratio between actual back and uh, length of the rib cage or length of the chest is 2 to 3. So, if the back is long, then for sure brisket or chest or ribcage is long. It was proven during my researches that the long chest or long back lead to deep chest. It was the first conclusion which is the um, base of the first postulate. And this is extremely important because these two dimensions, length and depth, define the big capacity of the rib cage. 
big volume. Uh, of course, there is the third dimension, the, the breadth of the chest, but we do not order the maximum of that. In the average, it should be intermediate. Why? Because two uh, sprung ribs, two rounded in the cross-section uh, rib cage, uh, would lead to the wrong positions of the shoulder blade and upper arm. Uh, and uh, due to these uh, wrong positions, the movement of the forelegs will be spoiled. They will be declined from the longitudinal axis of the body. And uh, that's why the provisional movement of the forelegs will be also spoiled. So, two dimensions, length and depth, are enough to provide the big volume of the rib cage. Uh, this is extremely important because uh, there are a lot of room for the best development of the lung and heart, plus general blood vessels. This is an uh, explanation on one hand. On the other hand, the short loin is also suitable. Uh, why? The function of the loin when dog is moving is to be spring, to transmit the motive thrusts from the rear to the front. And this is the function of the loin. Short loin, when uh, oscillating, has uh, the uh, small amplitude of those oscillations, which will be transmitted to the last part of the back, where back, there, are, there is the region of, region of last four false ribs, uh, is not supported by the breastbone. And uh, in this part, the back is really vulnerable. So, small oscillations, will not destroy this part of the back uh, too much. But if the length of the loin is increasing, then its oscillation and the amplitude will also be increasing. And uh, they will involve in this process of the big oscillation, this last part of the back which will oscillate with a big amplitude. And because it is, not, it is vulnerable with the age and uh, uh, loads, it will be destroyed. So the long loin, unlike the short loin, will be reason for the soft back. So the, both aspects, the first one and the second one, long back is very suitable to provide the soundness of the top line. This is from one perspective explanation. The second one, uh, I can only declare you, so please trust what I will be saying, that the first postulate named 211 is the main, is the general index, is the main postulate uh, between all others included in the biomechanical model of the dogs. Because if the dog is constructed according to this ratio to one one, then 
top line will be solid, strong, chest will be deep, and front and rear angulations in the first approximation will be correct as well as the format of the body. What is the last one? In Russia, we call the format of the body when considering uh, proportions between length of the body and height at width. So, now I believe that the value of the first postulate is understandable. The second postulate uh, 90 degrees angle by the axis of the pendulum. <coughs> leads uh, to next uh, results. Uh, you will see later on, we will be uh, looking at the dog on the move, that the, this uh, blue lines creating 90 degrees uh, angle will um, create the boundaries um, of the span or swing of the limbs when dog is uh, trotting quite um, close to the ground, quite close to be landing. And uh, movement will be balanced because of the equality of the front and rear strides. This is the first thing and the second one is that slant <coughs> of the shoulder blade and slate of the iliac bone, they are not independent and they dependence based on the 90 degrees angle. Uh, here you can see two horizontal lines. These lines, when dog is trotting, are oscillating contrary. What do I mean? Because of this uh, horizontal position of both lines, uh, when uh, hind leg is unbending, the hip will go up so much as the knee joint will go down. So, they will compensate the oscillations mutually. And finally, the top line will remain horizontal. And this is very important because I have to remind you, the motive thrust from the rear to the front are transmitted along the top line. And when it is level, when it is horizontal, the dog should not work to lift the center of gravity and uh, will be not tiring. Another thing is, that because of this horizontal line, the overbuilt construction when the ramp is higher than the withers, withers will be blocked, either in standing or in movement. At the same time, you can understand that even uh, this uh, two horizontal lines are provided, the slant or slope of the upper arm and upper thigh could be different. But we are looking for, this, uh, for those positions of these elements of the limbs when the best angulations in uh, front and in the rear will be provided. And these optimal angulations cannot be provided, just a moment, uh, cannot be provided by this principle. But 
they can be provided by the next one, which is the principle of two verticals. Uh, look at this, please. Elbow is under the top of with us. Stifle joint is under the tail steps. In this case, uh, the upper arm is uh, uh, inclined inclined back so much as it could be in principle and that's why the front angulation or angle between shoulder blade and the upper arm will uh, approach to 90 degrees angle which is the best for the functioning of uh, each joint of this one and that one and here is the same situation because in this case uh, upper thigh is inclined a bit forward to create the angle close to 90 degrees between the upper thigh and sciatic bow. Uh, a little bit more details in this case. Uh, here are located extensors, so uh, unbending muscles, and they function will be the best if this angle is 90 degrees or close to it. And finally, uh, it will create the preconditions for the best push, for the best motive thrust when dog is trotting. Uh, iliac bone is the place where flexors are located and flexors are bending muscles. So another upper thigh from the opposite side uh, creates the 90 degrees angle here between iliac bone and uh, another upper thigh. So the hip joint is functioning the best when both angles are of 90 degrees. Uh, something else. Look at the top line and look at this distance. My cursor is not obedient again. Oh my goodness. Yes, now obedient. So, you can see that the uh, joints, elbow joint and stifle or knee joint are located exactly under the ends of the top line. That's why they create the special mobile support of the spine, the spinal, spinal column. What is happening in this cage? Case. Uh, let us imagine uh, the disturbances uh, which are arising during the jumping of falling are transmitted firstly to this level. Here they will be softened, that's why the uh, spinal column uh, could remain stable and keep the level position, horizontal position. Uh, the top line, the actual top line is uh, in this case slightly sloping, but not because of the uh, um, spinal column, but because of the spinous processes, which are decreasing in the hind uh, backwards. So, and the last postulate, we don't have the illustration here, but uh, I will be uh, 
as I told you, the length of the body and distance between the front and rear legs are equal. Why? It is easy to explain. Uh, please try to imagine that the limbs are deprived of any angulations. They, they look as the legs of the chair, quite uh, straight, quite vertical, quite upright. In this case, it is quite, quite obviously that the distance between so-called legs and the legs of the body will be absolutely the same. Now, coming back to the real construction of the dog, according to which, by the system of the liver arms, the body is moved forward, either regarding front legs or regarding the hind legs and they are moved forward equally because otherwise the front stride and the rear stride will be not equal and the balance of the movement couldn't be provided. So, there are my short comments to each postulate and uh, Really, I didn't uh, uh, need to give these comments because postulate is the statement which should not be proved. But for the better understanding um, of the essential matter, I still gave this explanation on the level of the common sense. Now, it's a time to move uh, to the another model. Another model name is harmonic mode. And before to tell you about this model, please let me tell you something uh, new. I mean different <coughs> from different point of view that I used right now. Uh, we can appreciate uh, the dog beauty, dog's beauty, not only the dogs, we can appreciate the beauty without any knowledge of the harmony rules. We are born and uh, gifted from the nature to evaluate it and to uh, differ beautiful shapes, beautiful forms, and uh, ugly forms. How could we do that? We don't know anything about that. We are able to appreciate these features because of the gift. We are gifted from above, and this gift name is the golden section. The golden section is the universal form building principle according to which everything around us and inside us is built uh, according to this principle. The influence of this principle is universal, is really universal. And uh, I could give you a lot of examples illustrating how powerful is this, the, this golden section. But uh, I will tell you only about some of them. Uh, there are um, a lot of examples you can find in uh, my book I noticed before, I mentioned before. Uh, for, for example, uh, the human body is built according to the golden section. Uh, the beauty of the uh, face is based on our idea if this shape 
is close to the right oval. Uh, something else. The blood pressure is based on the golden section. The cardio cycle is based on the golden section. A lot of examples. One of them I will use a little bit later. After I will tell you what does it mean? What is this principle, the golden section? Now it's a time to go to the actual definition of the golden section. The golden section was very well known from the ancient time. In ancient Egypt, you can remember pyramids. In ancient Greece, you can remember Parthenon. And in the time of Renaissance, well known for the scientists, for the artists, for the musicians, uh, Euclid, who lived in uh, uh, 300 years before the Christ, gave the formal definition of this principle. And the name of this definition was the division of the segment according to the extreme and mean ratio. What does it mean? The segment O1 is divided by point X according to the extreme and mean ratio, if the whole segment, this is the one, one is here, to its biggest part, x, x is here, is the same as the biggest part, x, to the smallest one, 1 minus x, 1 minus x. This proportion can be easily transformed uh, into the square equation, and its positive root is square root from 5 minus 1, everything divided to 2. Uh, if we will look for the uh, rough meanings of this number. In the first approximation, sorry, in the third approximation, it will be 0.618. More rough approximation, if I neglect the third number, will be 0.62. And the last one, the most rough approximation, will be 0.6, or 3 to 5. Please, pay an attention to this number, to this fraction, we will use uh, many times today. Uh, the golden section name was given by Leonardo da Vinci. But Leonardo da Vinci was the only illustrator of the book written by Luca Pacioli who was a scientist uh, and monk, he was a mathematician, and both lived in the 16th century. Luca Pacioli wrote the book named La Proporzia Divina, which means divine proportion, or proportion given by God. And according to the Luca Pacioli idea, this proportion was the universal law of the harmony. Leonardo da Vinci renamed this name and called it as the Sectio Aureo, or Golden Section, and named it this uh, name, is uh, well known since the present time. Uh, four centuries before uh, Luca Pacioli and Leonardo da Vinci, 
In Pisa lived another Leonardo, Leonardo Fibonacci, who was solving the problem absolutely far away from our uh, coming back to the previous explanation uh, about the uh, first sequence of the Fibonacci sequence. So, the three initial numbers, the three initial members of the Fibonacci sequence uh, create very easily the, this sequence. One plus one is two. One plus two is three. Two plus three is five. Three plus five is eight, and on. Uh, this sequence could be easily modified uh, to the next one. I will divide each previous um, member of the sequence to the next one. One divided to one is one. Then why one divided to one second, two thirds, three fifths, five eighth, eight thirteenths, thirteenth twenty uh, first, and the limit of the sequence is the same number, is the golden section. That means that each member of the sequence of this second sequence is the approximation of the golden section. Uh, rough approximations, more precise approximations, and uh, look at this number, look at this member of the sequence. Three to five, the same, highlighted in red, which will be used for the for the practical uh, purposes uh, and uh, name it as the golden section. Uh, it is really rough approximation and this is less rough approximation, but we will neglect the rest because of mistakes of our measurements. So for our practical measurements for our practical work, this fraction, this number three to five will be enough. And this is uh, one important thing. Another one I would like to call the moment of truth. Please look at this three first numbers, three initial members of the Fibonacci sequence, one, one, two. And look at them in the reverse way, two, one, one. This is the numbers which defined the spinal column division. Now, I believe, it is very easy to understand why these numbers are required for the correct, for the ideal top-line division. Because they provide, finally, way to the golden section, to the perfection, to the harmony. And if these uh, numbers are uh, different, when the top line proportions uh, are different from these two numbers. That means that the golden section will be never approached and the harmony will be never ever provided. So now you have the explanation why the first postulate of the biomechanical model is of the great value. It was not possible to e explain this value in the framework of the biomechanical approach, but the explanation is 
found here in the framework of the harmonic approach. So one more time, please keep in your mind, strongly keep in your mind that the back or actual back or thoracic part of the spine, loin and sacrum create this ratio. And this is the initial tuning to the golden section. Okay, some examples uh, before I will <coughs> go to the harmonious proportions of the dog. Uh, I promised you to tell about one more example. Now this example name is the egg, which was used by Fabergé as the symbol of the perfection. Uh, the egg construction is according to the golden section, because it's a cross diameter and longitudinal diameter, but according to three to five. And for the eye, this shape is beautiful, but, but which is no, not less important that the, uh, this construction is extremely durable. It is practically impossible to destroy the egg if you're squeezing evenly in your hand. Look at this. Two different points of view, beauty and uh, function. And uh, beauty based on the golden sec uh, section provide the optimal meaning of the functions. In our case, this is the beauty of the egg shape and its durability, which is really required because of the embryo it should be provided, it should be um, it should be saved the best, it should be best protected. I told you already about human body construction uh, for the men. Uh, in hips, if we measure the body in hips, it's uh, breadth. And we will measure its body in shoulders. It will be three to five. By the women, it will be different. Uh, waist to the chest and waist to the hips will be three to find. And besides that, uh, the navel uh, is placed at the horizontal line which divides the human body according to the golden section. And the whole height to the lowest part will be the same as the lowest part will be the, to the upper part. About blood pressure, I mentioned, uh, the normal blood pressure is between 130 to 80 and 125 to 75. 130 to 80, look at this, 8 to 13. Fibonacci number, and 125 to 75 is 5 to 3. Look at this. Cardio cycle, systole and diastole, for uh, any uh, uh, person resting is according to the golden section. So a lot of examples. And now it would be uh, surprisingly if the um, dog construction 
uh, could um, avoid the influence of the golden section and uh, the dog construction is under the golden section influence. Now it's the time to tell you about the harmonious proportions. The first proportion is depth of the body, uh, sorry, very sorry, uh, depth of the chest, look, from the top point of the withers to the breastbone. And breastbone mainly is located at the same level as the ala of elbow. So depth of the chest, to the length of the top line from the first thoracic vertebra to the tail set is golden section or roughly three to five. Okay, the next one is length of the chest to the length of the body creates golden section or is created by the golden section. Uh, let me remind you, I'm measuring the length of the chest and length of the body from the same, same point, which is a point of sternum. And the end <coughs> is the end of the sciatic bone or buttock. So, three to five. Uh, try to remember the Euclid definition. This is the whole segment, O1. This is a point X. And the whole length, length of the whole segment to the length of the biggest part is the same as the length of the biggest part to the smallest one. A ratio between length of the body and length of the diameter is 3 to 5. What is the diameter? Here you can see the line connecting the occiput and the paw of the hind leg placed behind to the vertical rear pasta. Of course, these points <coughs> in the real life do not lie in one vertical plane which is parallel to the longitudinal axis of the body. So, it is the projection of that real line to the vertical plane parallel to the longitudinal axis of the body. Red to blue is golden section of three to five. Height at elbow so the sum of length of the head and neck is three to five. I have to pay your attention to the, this fact. Height at elbows should be measured at the level of the elbow joint, not at the level of the alma of elbow. Joint is working, not alma. Um, and the last one, please. Girth of the muzzle to the girth of the skull is three to five, or golden section. It's also easy to understand if we remember the egg. The egg construction is most durable and in this case this ratio will provide the best power of bite and if the bite needs to be extremely powerful then you have to remember heads of bull terrier or borzoi which are close in the shape to the egg Okay, something else. Coming back to the beginning of the harmonious proportions. Okay, I believe 
that you keep in your mind the second Fibonacci series. Uh, two, one, one, yes. One, one, two, first Fibonacci members. Or this is the middle of the top line and this is one second if this one, it is the half. One, two, two. So the very first is one, the second is one second, and uh, this is, as I told you, two, two, three, the next Fibonacci member. And this is uh, three, uh, my goodness, before, just a moment. Uh, two to three, three to five. Three to five. So you can see uh, Fibonacci members in a row. One more illustration of the golden section influence, which is based on the rough approximations of the golden section. Okay. Uh, this is probably enough. Should I need everything, anything else? Uh, I will be coming back to these models and uh, uh, I will ask about that. So, now you know about two approaches which I am going to use when reading and analyzing the standard of the Samoyed. Uh, time for the standard. Samoyed. The origin of the Samoyed is indicated as the northern Russia and Siberia, which is very interesting. Or Siberia doesn't belong to Russia? This is not correct. It should be mentioned that the origin is Russia. And when explaining the regions of the origin, later on in the brief historical summary, it could be noticed the regions of Russia uh, where we uh, are typical for this breed. So this is the first mistake. Patronage is not a kennel union. In the previous time, when the Russia was not in the FCI, it could be understandable. But now, this is not correct, in my opinion. And uh, the valid standard is on 4th of September 2019. One more question. One more question. Why? Uh, classification: Nordic sledge dogs without working trial. Brief historical summary: The name Samoyed. Uh, just a moment. Derives from the Samoyed tribes in the northern Russia and the Siberia. I have already uh, gave the comment. <coughs> in southern parts of the area, they used white, black and brown, particolored dogs in reindeer herders. In the northern part, the dogs were pure white, had a mild temperament, and were used as the hunting and the sledge dogs. The Samoyed dogs lived close to their owners, they even slept within the shelters and were used as heaters. The British zoologist uh, Ernst Kilburn Scott spent three months among Samoyed tribes in 1889. Returning to England, he brought with him a brown male puppy called 
Sabarka. Later, he imported a cream-colored beach called uh, Whitey Pechor from the western side of the Urals, and uh, a snow-white male called Masti from Siberia. These few dogs, uh, and those brought by the explorers, are the base for the Western Samoyed. The first standard was written in England, 1909. General appearance. A medium in size, elegant, a white Arctic spitz. In appearance, it gives the impression of power, endurance, charm, suppleness, dignity, and self-confidence. The expressions, the expression, uh, the called the, the so-called Samoyed smile is made up of the combination of eye shape. Uh, eye shaped and the position and the slightly curved up corners of the mouth. Uh, the sex should be clearly stamped. Important proportions. The length of the body, the length of the body is approximately 5% more than the height at Withers. The depth of the body is slightly less than the half of the height at Withers. The muzzle is approximately as long as the skull. It's a time to give the comments. Slightly long-bodied, yes, true. But the term uh, depth of the body is not so correct. Let us uh, consider two definitions. Depth of, the uh, depth of the chest and depth of the body. We are saying about the depth of the chest, if the brisket is uh, at the level of the ala of elbow here. And we are saying about depth of the body when we consider actual depth of the chest and distance between the brisket and the ground. So, um, I will give more details when analyzing the description of the body construction. Um, behavior and temperament. Friendly, open, alert, and lively. The hunting instinct is very slight. Never shy, nor aggressive. Very social and cannot be used as the guard dog. Head. The head powerful and wedge shaped. Um, cranial region, skull viewed from front and in profile only slightly convex. Broadest between the ears. Uh, slightly visible furrow between the eyes. It's covered by the hair. Stop. Clearly defined, but not too prominent. It is accentuated by the hair. Uh, facial origin. Uh, nose. Well developed. Uh, preferably black. During some periods of the year, the pigment of the nose can fade to a so-called winter nose. It's here. There must, however, always be dark pigment at the edges of the nose. Rings of the 
uh, nose leather should be black. Uh, muscles strong and deep. approximately as long as the skull gradually tapering towards the nose neither snappy nor heavy and square the bridge of the nose is straight lips close fitting black and rather full the corners of the mouth are slightly curved, forming the characteristic summer yet smile. Uh, jaw's teeth, regular and complete scissor bite. The teeth and the jaws are strong, normal dentition. Eyes, dark brown in color, well set in the sockets placed rather apart, uh, somewhat slanting and almost uh, almond-shaped. Uh, the expression is smiling, kind, alert and intelligent. The eye rims are black. Ears, erect, rather small, thick, triangular, and slightly rounded at the tips. They should be mobile, set high, due to the broad skull well apart. Uh, neck strong uh, of medium length uh, with a proud carriage. Body, slightly longer than the height at the withers. Deep and compact, but supple. Please pay attention. Body is deep and uh, compact. Deep and compact. Please remember that. With us, clearly defined back. Of medium length, muscular and straight. In females, slightly longer than in males. And uh, this is mistake. Because the proportions of the top line based on the golden section are not depending on the sex. Doesn't matter. Is it the male or female? The top line proportions are based on the principle 2, 1, 1. And two units fall on the back, one unit falls on the loin, and last one unit falls on the sacrum. Either for males or for females. So, this statement, this requirement of the standard is not correct. Um, unfortunately, the definition of the back uh, many times could lead uh, to the confusion. Because according to different glossaries of different countries, they could consider as the back several uh, different ideas. <coughs> Just a moment. <coughs> As the back could be considered the whole top line. Another definition is based on another idea. When as the back are considered actual back and loin together. The next definition is based on third idea, according to which the back starts from the end of with us to the elect tuber. And all these definitions 
are not uh, good. Because the only our definition actual back as the thoracic part of the spine gives us the possibility to find the proportions between top line divisions. And as you understand now, these divisions are extremely important because on the basic level, they determined the initial tuning to the golden section. So, the spine, uh, the back, which could be longer in the beaches, what is mentioned in the valid standard, is wrong. Of course, if the beach is slightly longer than the dog, and the length of the top line is uh, proportionally lengthened, the whole top line, not the back, because the internal divisions are remaining unchanged. One more time, the beach is longer, a little bit longer than the male. Then top line is proportionally longer in beaches than in the dogs. And it is quite uh, obvious. So, please uh, correct in your mind this requirement of the standard. Back is long, is relatively long, or long uh, in the comparison with the uh, other parts of the top line. It says it's the longest part of the top line. In this case, actual back is rather or relatively long. This is true. But the statement about the difference in these proportions, back, loin, crest, uh, loin, uh, sacrum, should remain on the same requirement, on the same ratio. This should be correct. And it could be checked by your hands when you examine the dog. So, we move further. Uh, you remember, body should be deep. With us, clearly defined back of medium legs, muscular and straight in females, slightly longer than in males, it's considered. Loin short, very strong and defined. This is true. Loin is short and uh, body is compact. Both requirements match each other. Group, full, strong, muscular and slightly slopy. Uh, nothing about it le its length, but you understand the le length of the group is, of course, more than the length of its upper part because of the length of the sciatic bones. All these bones, plus its upper part, plus muscles and tendons in this region, uh, define the group. So, short sacrum or short rump doesn't mean that the croup is short. No, it's of moderate length. Chest, broad, deep and uh, long, reaching almost to the elbows. Let us uh, consider this statement. Um, According to the definition, chest is deep if the breastbone is located at the same level as the ulna of the elbow. That means the chest is deep. But then we are, uh, then we find 
the the uh, uh, chest reaching almost to the elbows. Um, it could be some uh, confusion because this requirement is reaching almost to the elbow. We have to analyze. Of course, uh, breastbone doesn't approach to the elbow level, doesn't reach to the elbow level. It reaches to the ulna level. And then we can understand the requirement mentioned in the beginning uh, regarding the general uh, appearance. Chest depth and height at elbows are a little bit different. Height at elbows is a little bit more than the depth of the chest. At the same time, <coughs> it doesn't contrad contradict the universal principle when, for the majority of the dogs, for the majority of the breeds, that the Elbow joint is located in the middle of the distance between top of the withers and the ground, where the elbow joint is uh, divides this height into two equal parts, this and uh, that. So, depth of the body is based on this ratio, depth of the chest, and height at elbow joint. I believe it is clear. Uh, the ribs are well sprung. Um, underline, moderate tuck up. Tail, set rather high. When the dog is alert or in motion, the tail is carried bent from the root forward over the back or side, but may be hanging at rest when then reaching to the hocks. Limbs. General appearance. Well placed and muscular with the strong bones. Viewed from the front straight and parallel. Shoulder. Long, firm and sloppy. I mean, it is not indicated here. Shoulder blades. Long, firm, and sloping. Uh, upper arm. Oblique and close to the body. Approximately as long as the shoulder. You remember, ideally, elbow is under the top of with us. Which means that they are equal in length. Um, a carpus, strong but supple. A pastern, slightly oblique. Forefeet, oval, with long toes, flexible and pointing straight forward. Tooth arch and not too tightly knit. Neat. Elastic pads. Hind quarters. General appearance. Viewed from behind, straight and parallel with very strong muscles. Upper thigh. Of medium length, rather broad and muscular. Stifle well angulated. Hawks rather low and well angulated. Metatarsis, short, strong, vertical, and parallel. Let us analyze this description. Uh, the upper thigh is uh, described medium length, rather broad and muscular, nothing about its slant. Uh, description of the 
the second thigh is missing. And only it's mentioned the angulation between upper and uh, lower thigh. With the words that the style well angulated. But an exhaustive definition are devoted to the rare pastime. Look, hawks, it's a hog joint, rather low and well angulated. Plus, additional. Rare pastel, short, strong, vertical, and parallel. Short rare pastel and low located hook are the same requirements. One more time, it is the example of pleonasm. Uh, pleonasm is a semantic repetition. At the same time, lower thigh is not described. And the construction of the hind leg is extremely important and extremely important are length of both upper and under thigh, as well as the angle between the upper thigh and the um, pelvic bones, so coxofemoral angulations. This is not described here. The Samoyed is sledge dog, and uh, the motive thrust from the rear limbs should be very powerful, and dog should be uh, should have a lot of endurance. So. This is based on the best construction of the rear limbs. Hind feet as front feet. The view clause should be removed except in the countries where it is forbidden by the law. Law. Gate. Powerful, free and tireless in the appearance with a long stride. Good reach in the four quarters and good driving power in the hind quarters. This is one more time a uh, description of the um, extended trot with a powerful motive thrust. So let us uh, look at the Samoyed on the move when it's trotting and analyze uh, in details which are based on the knowledge uh, set out in our models. This is the picture typical for the beautiful, beautifully moving summer yet. And uh, our mm, uh, impression is based on the emotional level. With more details, we can understand it looking at this drawing where front uh, bones and rear bones are shown. So, our our persistence is based on the principle uh, of the golden section. We don't know anything looking at these dogs when saying how beautiful is the movement. Very sound side movement. And now let us analyze what does it mean. Uh, we need the next picture, please. Now, let us analyze step by step. When you are looking at the dog on the move, what is in focus of your attention? First of all, you look at the top line, which should remain level for the majority of the breeds. And I have to... Um, emphasize 
that they both models either biomechanical and uh, harmonic are valid for the majority of the breeds. Of course, there are some exceptions, but some of you do doesn't belong to these exceptions. So, level top line, level final column position. Then we will find that the front strides and rear strides are of equal length. Then you can see that the limbs in the swing will be inscribed in this blue angle, which creates boundaries of this limbs swing. Next one, this is the red vertical line, lowered from the point of intersection or from the axis of the pendulum, where the center of gravity is located. And you can find that the limbs from the opposite side are converging to the base on this vertical line. And this is also of very great importance. Because in this case, it is provided the minimum of uh, body wobbling. What do I mean? Uh, try to imagine that you are in the bus. Bus uh, is moving. And you have to find out the place where uh, you will be standing uh, with a minimum of wobbling. Where should be this place? Of course, in the center of gravity. And here is the same, as you can see. This principal name is principle of converging powers. It belongs to the theoretical mechanics, which is um, uh, outside our uh, consideration. So, uh, I can only declare it. Uh, next one, the yellow line. This is a vertical line connecting the eye and the paw of the foreleg at the moment of landing or close to it. And uh, this is uh, could be considered as the uh, from the two points of view. The first one is uh, this, it could be considered as the criterion of the equilibrium. Uh, really, the vestibular apparatus is located inside the ear, and the eye is a bit in front of the this vestibular apparatus and uh, will provide the equilibrium when dog will be landing, being a little bit in advance to this moment. And the last one are these green lines, two horizontal lines uh, which belong to the one of the biomechanical postulates. So, if we analyze the dogs when moving, we have to keep in our minds all these criteria. And then they will help you to understand if this movement, this side movement, I mean, is sound, this is the term, uh, for the uh, integrity of all uh, criteria, or oh, no. A profuse, thick, flexible, and dense polar coat. The Samoyed is a double-coated dog with a short, soft, and dense undercoat, and longer, harsher, and straight outer coat. The coat should form a rough around the neck. Um, 
uh, and shoulders framing the head, especially in males. On head and on front of the legs, hair is short and smooth. Oh. On outside of ears, short, standing off and smooth. Inside the ears should be well furred. On back of the thighs, the hair forms trousers. There should be a protective growth of the hair between the tooth. The tail should be profusely covered with the hair. The coat of the female is often shorter and softer in texture <coughs> than that of the male. The correct coat texture should always have a special glistening sheen. Color, pure white, cream or white with a biscuit. The basic color to be white with a few biscuit markings should never give the impression of being pale brown. Size, height at widths, ideal height. Male, 57, with a tolerance of plus minus 3 centimeters. And females, 53, with a tolerance of plus minus 3 centimeters. Faults. Visible faults in structure. Light bone. Males not masculine and females not feminine. Pincer bite. Yellow eyes. Soft ears. Barrel rib cage. Double twisted tail. Low on the legs. Badly bow legged and bow hocked. Wavy or short coated throughout. Long, soft or coat hanging down. Aloofness, clearly unpigmented areas on the eye rims or lips, serious fault. Eliminating faults, aggressive or overly shy, any dog clearly showing physical or behavioral abnormalities, eyes blue or of different colors, overshot or undershot bite, he has not erect, coat color other than permitted in the standard. Before to consider the pictures, I would like to come back to the very beginning. In the very beginning, I will remind you the requirements uh, mentioned in the standard, important proportions. The depth of the body is slightly less than the half of the height at width. When you are looking in the body, from the side, you cannot find anything similar to this requirement. And uh, the only, when you check with your hands, when you examine the dog, you can find out that the breastbone is reaching uh, to the elbow ulna, not to the elbow joint. But from the side, when the dog is in the full coat condition, the appearance is different. And the only important thing uh, when you are looking at the dogs before you are examining it is to find out the level of the elbow. And this will help you to understand whether the forelegs are short or of normal length. So, very different pictures, but you have to keep in your mind external and internal structures. This is the, this is that. Хорошо. Now we, uh, we are coming to the, we are going to the pictures, to the photos. I would like to express my gratitude 
to the breeders who sent me pictures with a lot of beautiful dogs you can see in these pictures. So, there are two examples. Of course, dog looks more long-bodied than it is really when uh, looking from skeleton. There are points which should be checked and you can see that the real difference is this one. And you can compare immediately with the distance between the legs, which will help you to understand uh, if they uh, match to each other. The dog looks a, a little bit short-legged, but you have to understand where is the elbow level before to say the sh dog is short leg. This is not true. So, length of the forelegs is correct. A little bit too soft pastels. And uh, also, if these pastels are not so much inclinated, the length of the forelegs will increase. So, but overall, this is a beautiful, long-bodied, deep-chested dog with a strong bones, with a beautiful head, arched, noble neck, short top line, absolutely correctly carried and furred tail, with the excellent angulations for either front angulations or rear. This is a picture of the dog viewed from front. Head, eyes and uh, lips, shape, a smiling expression. Excellent pigmentation of the nose, lips, eyes. Excellent set of the forelegs. Uh, this is our... Uh, Show with the skeleton and all lines. Uh, we don't need it right now, maybe later on. Uh, there are pictures of the head, and uh, I can only repeat uh, what is required by the standard, nothing else. Everything is according to the standard. This weight shape, this. Uh, shape of the lateral sides, how uh, are placed the ears, uh, the eyes, the shape and slant, lips, corner of the lips, up, black nose, small erect ears, uh, the width of the skull between the ears. Everything is very typical for the summer year. Three quarters picture. And uh, we can go on. So one more time. We saw already these pictures. This is the profile. And the uh, stop is... Um, a bit uh, is looking a bit too deep, but because of the hair, with the, uh, you can uh, take away this hair, and you can see another uh, red leaf of profile. Also, excellent pigmentation of nose, eyes, and lips. We saw already this picture, smiling, and the nose, winter nose, with the black rim, uh, rims, and with the corners of the lips up. There are two heads and two different impressions. 
to different appearances. This is a very typical, which is described in the standard. And this is the different look. Not so wide in the skull, a bit longer in the muzzle, another shape and placement of the eyes sockets, um, not pigmented male, and the main thing is the expression. You cannot find here the lips with the corners up, and if this is expression is smiling, this expression is sad or somber. Also, these ears are set high, and these ears are set not so high, with the tips uh, um, directed towards sides. So, very similar to the dog we saw in the beginning. I don't know, maybe it's the same dog. Very similar construction and also a little bit too soft pastels. All the rest is very similar to the first one and I will not describe it. A slightly long-bodied dog with a good depth of the body and good, good length of the forelegs. Uh, with a nice head, maybe a little bit too deep and abrupt stop. Medium long neck, straight top line, correct tail set and tail carriage. <coughs> Front angulation could be better. Please uh, take a look. This is the withers. And this is the vertical line. And this is the elbow joint. And elbow joint should be located on this vertical line. But it is ahead. So... This is because of the front construction. Look at the upper, uh, look at the shoulder blade, which is oblique, correctly set, correctly uh, laid back. And this is the set of the upper arm, which is not so oblique, a little bit too straight. That's why the shoulder angulation is more open and the elbow is moved forward instead of to be under the withers. The rear angulations are enough. I can say that these angulations are excellent. You can look at the um, back side of the limbs and see that this line is a little bit straight. So, this is the upper thigh, this is the second thigh, and uh, this is the rear pasta. The second thigh could be a little bit longer. And because of that, the front stride of the hind leg is almost straight, without point of the stifle. So, uh, two beautiful dogs. Maybe it is the same dog, I don't know. Uh, slightly long-bodied, with an excellent depth of the body. Look at the level of the elbow. This is the front assembly. This is the level of the elbow. So it's absolutely correct proportion between depth of the chest and distance from the elbow ala to the ground. Solid body with the excellent top line, beautiful head and expression, noble arched neck, excellent set and carried tail, and excellent angulations, either in front or in the rear. Look at this dog in free stance. Uh, somewhat long-bodied, but please keep in your mind the real length of the body, which should be 
checked by your hands. And compared to the distance between the front and fro fro rear legs. Um, maybe the four legs could be a bit longer. The body is solid, the head is beautiful, the uh, neck is long and uh, arched and noble, correct short top line, profusely coated tail with an excellent carriage. Um, nice dog. Let's go on. Very interesting picture. And uh, I will analyze it with you. Coming back to the uh, model approach. Uh, first of all, I would like to describe what we see at this picture. Take a look at this. The handler is very close to the dog. And the dog needs uh, to, uh, to hold his head very high. Head and neck are very high set. And you can see immediately that the shoulder joint is in front of the vertical li line lowered from the withers. Let us analyze it and uh, let us compare with a dog which is a freestanding also freestanding but the neck and head are not so high carried and the uh, front angulations is uh, is better than here why? Let us come back to the model. You remember uh, the photos. Now, I will give some another explanation. The neck, shoulder blade, and the upper arm create liver arm. And ideally, the length of these elements, which are handles of the liver arm, are equal and of the same slant. If the dog must uh, keep uh, hold the neck and uh, head high, then the elbow will move forward. Should I understand it one more time? Neck will be set close to vertical and upper arm will set also close to vertical. Elbow will move forward. And rail construction, which is ideal, will be changed because of too high carried neck. So, moreover, look at this. Upper arm, line connecting elbow and stifle plus second thigh create another liver arm. which exists in your imagination. <laughs> Virtual liver arm. And that's why the upper arm and second thigh ideally are of the same length and the same slant. So, if the neck is carried too high, then the elbow moves forward as well as the uh, rear legs also move forward. When you see 
the dog uh, in this uh, position and find that the front angulation could be better, don't give the final uh, decision about the front and the rear angulations. Because the silhouette of the dog and uh, angulations are changed due to the very high carried neck, which influences the more upright uh, positions of the upper arm and the upper thigh. Uh, the uh, cause is the hander very close to the dog. When uh, dog requires uh, to, hold the, to hold the head very high. In this case, probably the hander is more far away from the dog and the front angulation is immediately better than at the previous picture. So, uh, what is the conclusion? Before to judge this dog, please let him move. You will see everything on the move. Everything when dog is trotting. This is an extended trot. Uh, according to the criteria I have already described, look, uh, almost equal length of the front and rear strides. <coughs> Vertical line, which is connecting the eye and paw of the front leg, uh, close to the landing. We will see another picture, dog on the move. And you can see uh, the same uh, features. The dog is moving not so fast like before. And uh, you can see, I don't describe the top line, it's very e easily visible. It's absolutely perfect. Uh, I'm saying about the angulations. With the bad angulations in front, this length of the front stride could not be uh, approached. And this is approached because of the vertical line. Look at this. Length of the front stride and of the rear stride are equal. And uh, the um, rear leg is at the position of the support of the body close to the location of the center of the um, equilibrium, center of gravity. This is also example and uh, this, dog's, this dog looks uh, a bit overbuilt. You can see that the rump is a little bit higher than the withers. And this is uh, usually because of the upper thigh, which is not long enough and somewhat mm, straight set. But the length of the front and the rear strides are equal. And the criterion of the vertical line connecting ear and paw of the front leg is here. Uh, we cannot evaluate um, construction of the rear legs and uh, can only suppose that the cause of the uh, ramp, which is too high in the comparison with the withers, is because of, of the upper thigh. Uh, this picture is quite nice, but it is difficult to describe it because of the angle from which dog was pictured. Let's go on. Uh, this is a beautiful picture. 
everything is provided equal strides location of the hind leg at the stage of support of the body uh, swing of the limbs and the criteria of the vertical line connecting eye and paw of the front leg this dog is moved very fast so besides that we cannot see exactly in profile and the only thing we can um, uh, we can evaluate is the excellent top line uh, long neck um, um, good reach vertical line connecting eye and the paw of this foreleg uh, the face is um, not that when the hind leg will take a position under the body you can see that the front leg is still supporting the body so we cannot uh, say um, exactly about the length of the front and the rear strides so we can only evaluate what we see at this picture here is everything presented why I um, suggested you to look at the dog uh, dogs on the move uh, because final decision should be taken when you consider both standing and movement so we have already describe these dogs let's go on this is a somewhat long body dog not too much um, and uh, it is correct depth of the body you can find out the level of the elbow strong in bones not in the full coat condition a large head uh, probably the actual stop is okay and it looks a bit too uh, deep a bit too abrupt because of the superciliary arches it is not exactly profile uh, medium long neck short top line a bit straight in front you can see where's the elbow and where's the widths and uh, also rear angulation could be better but the distance between the legs uh, much the length of the body is equal it is one more example on the right picture similar in some ways to the photo we have also described when the dog uh, needs to uh, hold the neck and head very high and straighten the set of the uh, forelegs and because of that it is straight in front and uh, some in some ways artificially uh, set rear legs not the best moment for the description uh, standing is a bit too artificial and uh, angulation because of that are a bit spoiled uh, this is a beautiful dog somewhat long bodied deep chested this is the elbow level you can see that even it is hidden um, under the profuse coat strong in bones solid body with a uh, i believe this is the dog with a beautiful head which looks in profile with a bit too much uh, defined stop but also um, uh, uh, eyebrows or superciliary arches are um, exaggerate the depth of this stop head is beautiful uh, because of very typical 
um, smiling expression. You, you can see the corners of the lips, of the black lips, black nose, black eyes, small ears. Uh, good length of the neck, um, good front angulation, maybe not perfect at uh, the picture, you can remember about the criterion of the vertical line lowered from the withers, which is a bit behind the, the um, elbow joint. But it is because of the very high position of the neck. When the dog uh, requires to look, to find out the eyes of the handler. Um, the hind legs, uh, um, as the compensation placed behind a bit too much. You can see that the vertical rear pastern are not vertical. That the rear pastern are not vertical. But in general, this is a beautiful dog. One more time, with a beautiful head and expression, with a solid body of a good depth, with a strong bones, and uh, uh, more or less correct angulations. This dog sh looks short-legged and long -boot. Uh Head is a bit too small with a bit too uh, light muzzle, especially light underjaw, a, a bit snipe. Uh, nose could be larger. I cannot see exactly the um, eyes sockets. And uh, I cannot find here the correct corners of the lips, which should be curved up. They are not curved. And that's why the expression is not typical. Nice neck, rather long top line, correctly set and carried tail. Very deep chest, flat in front. Uh, the forward chest is um, not enough pronounced. And the front angulation is uh, too straight. Shoulder blade uh, set is okay, but upper arm is too straight, and uh, forearms are too short. And the rear angulations are also only enough. If mm, I evaluate this dog being tolerated, and uh, really they are straight. You can see the rear pastern is not vertical and the hawk angulation is open. Also not exactly in profile. Uh, Long-bodied, deep-chested dog with a strong bones. Looks a little bit short-legged which is also emphasized but by uh, soft pastels. Um, I cannot see exactly the head profile, so I will not describe it. Um, nice neck and rather short top line. Tail set and tail carriage is correct. Uh, front angulation is uh, and the picture is a bit too open. And uh, uh, the rear look, rear legs look somewhat overangulated. Maybe this is because of the wrong cut of the hair um, along the uh, back uh, edge of the rear pasta. But they are slanted forward. Well-coated dog. Uh, this is a nice dog in general, medium long-bodied, with the correct depth of the body. This is the length, this is the level of the elbow. Strong in bones. Uh, nice head. Uh, I cannot see the um, a corners of the lips. So I cannot say anything about the expression, about the smile expression. Uh, long enough neck, uh, 
level a rather short top line correctly tail set and uh, tail carriage uh, a bit straight in front shoulder blade upper arm elbow and the vertical line lowered from the widows a bit too soft pastels also rear legs should be better angulated you can see the uh, rear stride is not too big and uh, um, nevertheless the hawk angulation is defined not the best is straightened so we saw already this picture i will not describe it this is the example of the situation i have already described when the dog needs to hold the neck and head very high and that's why the front angulation is straightened uh, and uh, the dog must move the elbow forward because of this liver arm neck of the blade and uh, upper arm and upper arm should be parallel to the neck as well as the second thigh should be parallel to the upper arm that's why this angulation is also not so natural header is rather close to the dog and it influences the silhouette change so we have seen a lot of pictures and uh, i have to say besides that uh, my comments to the uh, standard um, provisions that this is not an easy dog to judge uh, of course it's quite easy to remember the expression smiling dog but this is not easy to uh, evaluate correctly the whole construction because of the profuse coat which changes the internal construction and uh, it should be checked by your hands and also and maybe the first of all when dog is moving so all together will give you the right picture of the dog which will be base of your final decision but coming back to the model approach i have to accentuate or to emphasize something else this is the picture which is uh, typical for the beautiful summer yet you see from outside but according to the standard the depth of the body should not be like that and should be only like that and this is up to you how to check it you have your hands you can check if the brisket is located at the level of the elbow alna first of all otherwise <coughs> your persistence will be different uh, and uh, you will find this dog rather stocky rather uh, rather stocky it's enough and in reality it's rather leggy dog not too much just a little but still a little bit leggy so you have to check the location of the uh, brisket and then find out where is located the elbow joint and knee joint and uh, this is the 
reference point to understand if the front angulations uh, match the rear angulations. First horizontal line and second horizontal line, according to which the shoulder joint or humerus scapula and hip joint are located at the same horizontal line. So it is possible to check with your hands. The front angulations could be checked by the criterion, which could be found very easily uh, by the eye. Easy. Elbow joint is located under the top of withers. And knee joint is located under the tail set. And for the very first step of your examination of the dog should be top line proportions because it is the base of the dog harmony. With your hands, you can find out the boundaries be between anatomical parts of the top line. Thoracic part or back, lumbar part or loin, rump or sacrum. And it is very easy to understand if this is located in the middle of the whole top line and this point is located in the middle of the rest. Two, one, one. Something else. As I told you, the elbow joint is located in the middle of the distance from the top of withers to the ground. I have already reminded you that the shoulder blade and upper arm are of equal length. That's why they are of equal contrary uh, slants. This angle and this angle ideally are equal. And ideally, the vertical projection of the shoulder blade and the vertical projection of the upper arm are also equal. This is the half of the distance. This is its quarter and this is also its quarter. So, along this vertical, the dog is built according to the initial Fibonacci members. Two, one, one. Two, one, one along the top line and two, one, one along this vertical line. And please keep in your mind that it is the initial tuning to the golden section. And when dog is built according to this ratio, then the harmonic proportions will appear automatically. It is not necessary um, to, um, to select the dog along the old proportions. They will appear themselves automatically after this tuning 2-1-1 here and 2-1-1 here is provided. And this is the algorithm also for the breeders. So, for the judges, reference points are 2-1-1, very easy to find out with your hands. Uh, two horizontal lines, two vertical lines, and it is enough to provide the soundness of the dog's construction. So, as promised, uh, I gave you the key, either for the judges or for the breeders, uh, I told the, in the beginning about. So, should you have any questions, I will be very glad to answer. Maybe it would be also good to discuss something for your better understanding. 
because this is the end of the year and uh, this is the last lecture. Should you have uh, these questions, please ask. I'm ready. Nothing is written about color of nails and feet parts. Uh, look, let us come back to the standard about color of the nails and feet pads. Uh, there is nothing here. There is only shape of the feet, uh, either four feet or hind feet. Nothing is uh, mentioned here. So, uh, in my opinion, but it is the only my individual opinion, I would prefer to have pigmented nails and pigmented pads, but nobody is checking the pads color. Uh, like it should be done, for example, uh, for what else? Здесь есть по-русски вопрос. Добрый день. Хотелось бы узнать тенденции взаимосвязи, конституции, кондиции, рабочих качеств. Uh, что я могу сказать? Что экстерьер – это общее утверждение, оно не исключение для самоеда, экстерьер функционар. Говорить о конституции я бы не стал, потому что, если говорить всерьез, то тип конституции – это тип телесной организации, тип телосложения, вернее, и, и тип вашей нервной деятельности мы не проверяем, когда проводим оценку собаки в ринге. Только отчасти. Я не буду сейчас перечислять. Три позиции, которые необходимы для того, чтобы характеризовать тип вышней нервной деятельности. Вы сами знаете, что я имею в виду. Кондиция зависит от того, как используется собака. Если это рабочая собака, если она много движется, то понятно, что и кондиция у нее будет рабочей. То есть не такая упитанная будет собака, как в том случае, когда она только выставляется. По поводу рабочих качеств, любые рабочие качества должны проверяться не в ринге, а на испытании. Это упряжная собака, поэтому ее выносливость надо определять на соответствующих мероприятиях. Единственное, что я могу сказать, еще раз возвращаясь к определению, что экстерьер функционален, что плохо сложенные собаки, будут работать хуже, чем хорошо сложенные собаки. Но помимо этого, есть вещи, которые сейчас не учитываются. Также я имею в виду тот же самый темперамент или силу духа, к примеру, которые важны у собак, работающих в суровых арктических условиях. Они живут у нас в нашей повседневной жизни, их не используют по их природному предназначению, поэтому я могу только предполагать, а вряд ли именно это может быть интересно. Mm -hmm. Что еще? Okay, it's all. We finished with the questions. Мне кажется, все. Барри, okay. thank you very much to both of you for lectures this year. They have been a much needed highlight in a challenging year. Thank you, Eugen. Thank you. Thanks to you, dear friends, for staying with us. Okay, thank you very much for your coming. Thank you very much for your interest in this beautiful native breed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wish you happy new year. And uh, I believe that the restrictions because of the pandemic will be finally disappeared and we will be lucky again to meet in real life all together. At least this is my great and strong wish. Stay safe, be lucky and uh, I'm very happy 
and having you in our community. Thank you. Thanks to you. Uh, happy New Year and see you soon. Thank see you. Bye.